This is Bruce, the accounting guy, talking more depreciation, double declining balance, everybody's favorite. Now, when it comes to the double declining balance, as I said before, depending on the depreciation you, you use, it depends on this matching principle thing of how are we going to expense out this item, okay, against the revenue it's helping us earn. Now, when we use the straight line method, we use the straight line because we said it was going to pretty much be, really, we're going to expense out the same year after year because we're pretty much going to earn the same revenue and it's, we're going to use the, the asset the same amount of time. And that's really the whole purpose for straight line depreciation. Yet you're getting the benefit out of that asset is going to be the same from year to year to year. Now when it comes to double declining balance, it's called an accelerated method. And that accelerated method, all right, the purpose of that accelerated method is because what we're saying is, is that we're going to use that asset more up front than we are at the end. And that we're going to get a, get a greater benefit from it more up front than we are at the end. It's going to be our newest piece of equipment. Therefore, we're going to probably use it more because it's the best piece of technology we have. Uh, it's also going to probably able to be uh, break down less than some of our other pieces of equipment. So we'll also, what, use it, what, less. I mean, use it more. And therefore, since we're getting more production out of it, we'll expense it out more at the beginning and less at the end. So our expense will be, will be higher at the beginning. And then as if you see a graph in your textbook, you'll see that the expense gets what lower and lower. But still in the end, even under this method, we're still in this example we're using only going to expense out $12,000 out of it. All right, so let's take a look at it. Now, to calculate the double declining balance, the one thing that we get to do in year one is we get to start with the full $13,000. And therefore, right off the bat, we're starting with a larger number than that $12,000 number that we were under straight line. The other thing that I want you to realize is it is called double declining balance. And the reason it's called double is where we're going to double the rate. So the whole key to this thing, though, know, I have it written out here for you and it's written out in your book, is, is that you want to take the number one and put it in your calculator and simply divide it by the number of years that you're depreciating this asset over. So in this case, we would divide one by five and up in our calculator would, pump, would, would pop point two. Now the purpose of this point two is the fact that that tells us that's 20%. That's really the straight line rate. Think about it. Under straight line depreciation, over five years, we depreciated one-fifth of it every year, so it's 20%. But once you have that pop up, this is called double, so therefore double the rate, and now you have 0.4, and that would be your factor. So we're going to take 40% of that number in the very first year. Wow, that's quite a bit, okay? Now, if it was a 10-year asset, again, you take the number one, you divide it by 10, and up in your calculator pops 0.1, and that's 10%. And that means if you were using straight line, sure, you're taking one-tenth every year. Isn't that right? Straight line, we take the same amount every year, it'd be one-tenth. But this is called double declining balance, so we double the rate, and now we would come up with a factor of 0.2. So that's how we figure out our factor that we use under this method. You have to be very careful. Always take the number one and divide it by the number of years, and then double the amount, and that gives you your rate. So you're coming back to this calculation now then for double declining balance, we can see the $13,000 times 40%, and that gives us $5,200. That's the, again, this is assuming that we're depreciating this, we're, that we purchased this asset the first of the year. So now we can take the whole 5200 bucks. Now if we go back to straight line, notice that we only took $2,400. That is a radical difference, okay, a very radical difference. Excuse me for saying my phone is vibrating here now. Um, yes. Okay. Yes, I will do that. Okay, good. All right, that was one of my clients, and how they get getting my numbers and knowing that I'm here today, I don't know. But my client would tell you, he wants me to make sure that you realize that for tax purposes, this is a significant difference. He doesn't care about this gap crap, as he would say. So I don't care about your gap crap. He says, all I really care about is taxes. And he says, look, in year one, if you use straight line, you only get $2,400. But in year one, if you use double declining balance, he gets to write off the whole $5,200 
Wow, that's a big difference. That's more than double. And the more expense that my client can write off now, the what? The more money he saves or she saves in income taxes. And this is the method that's used in the tax code, double declining balance. It gives the taxpayers a chance to write off their, to write off their assets at a quicker rate. But again, under generally accepted accounting principles, and we're learning GAAP, we're learning accounting rules, we're not concerned with tax rules. All right, if we were to use the double declining balance method, the reason we're using it is, is we're saying that it's the newest and the best technology we have and that it's going to produce more for us now than it will later. And that's the whole philosophy behind it. So in year one, we've now written off $5,200. Now, how do we get to year two? Well, we have to realize that if we started with 13 and we've just written off 52, what do we have left? So we subtract the 5,200 from the 13, and now we have $7,800 left. And what we would do then for year two is start off with the 78. We multiply it by 40%, and now we get a write-off of 3120 of depreciation in year two. Still more than $2,400. We've now written off $8,330. We're under the straight line. We've only written off $4,800. So you can see this is significantly faster. Now, how do we get to year three? Again, we start off with only $7,800 left. We just took out another $3,120. We subtract that, and now we have $4,600. <coughs> 80. We multiply that now by 40% and now we take the 1,870. Notice at this point our depreciation will become less than straight line. There has to come a time where our depreciation we're taking is less than straight line because we're taking so much more up front. We're still only going to get $12,000 here. If you, multiply, if you add these numbers up, they'll still only be $12,000. But the difference is we're getting a savings more up front. Saving dollars up front is better than at the end. And again, what happens is where do these become equal? It's called the half-life. This is a five-year asset. Halfway through would be two and a half years. So in year three, it would, it would catch up and straight line here would be greater. If this was a 10-year asset instead, where would this catch up? Halfway through 10 years is... Five years. If it was a 20-year asset, it would catch up at 10 years. So we always catch up halfway through. Now, where do we go to year four? Again, 4,680 was our starting amount. We just took out another 1,872, subtract it. We're now to 2,808, and yes, you got it, times 40% is the 1,123. Now we get to year five. We subtract the 1,123 from the 2,808, and we start off with 1,685, and we come up with 40%. Now, 40% of this is $674. Why do I have 685 here? Because of the fact this is the fifth and final year, and this has to total $12,000. So this is kind of like a plug in the final year. We get everything else. And that's how the double declining balance works. Now, double declining balance was for a full year. Let's take a look at that partial five that, that partial purchase in May. It's not much different. We just have to prorate that first year. We'd still start off with $13,000 times 40%. We'd still come up with our $5,200. But remember, we only have 8 twelfths of a year. It's May through December. So we multiply that 5,200 times 8 twelfths, and it comes up to 3,467. That's still more than the straight line amount of $1,600 that we had here for the 8 twelfths. Now, going back to the double declining balance, how do we get to year two? If this is the depreciation we took in year one, we simply subtracted from 13, the 3467, and now we come up with 9533, three, and we multiply it times 40%, and of course we can take the full amount because we had the asset for a full year. We have no more proration. We follow the same steps. Now take the 9533, subtract out the 3813. We come up with 5720, and again, we multiply times the 20%, and then it equals the 2288. And then and again, we follow the same procedure all the way through that we did in the previous example. Only difference, we had a prorate the first year. And that's all I have on double declining balance. So... Look forward to seeing you again when we do units of activity real soon.